right, so here we have the iPhone version, and uh, again, same thing, downloaded. Um, between the different versions, we do a little tweaking to make sure it's the best looking uh, screen performance. Uh, and again, we'll go through the same thing. So here we have uh, uh, the date from when we pulled the information. You can see the battery range. Uh, this particular case is shown 100%. The EV range is around 40 miles, and your total range is 300 miles. You see the charge mode here says plug and plug in, so you know that anytime I plug that in, it's going to start charging. I mean, that's cool. You also can see that it has 120 and 240 volts, and if it's plugged in or not, and it says right here it's fully charged. We have the brag screen, which shows your uh, miles per gallon, your EV miles, and your odometer, and that's the light time. <laughs> if you flip those to your last trip, and in this particular example, it's infinity because there's all electric. Uh, we have the four functions that you have on a normal key fob. So we have the lock, unlock, remote start, lock your horn, flash your light. Remote start, the reason we're uh, focusing on that is that if you're plugged in and you hit the remote start, it will uh, allow you to pull energy off the house instead of taking miles away from the house which you can drive. So you can warm up your car on a cold, cold day. That's right. <laughs> or cool it in a hot day. Okay, that's very important. So and again, we have the different settings here with respect to the charge mode. So right now it's shown that uh, upon plug-in, you can change it to delayed or grid friendly, which means that we will actually reach out to our back office, back office to the vehicle, and change the setting within the vehicle. Uh, we also have the ability to do alerts. So you can see we, in this particular case, we uh, show there's a charge complete alert, there's a charge interrupted, and then a, a plug-in reminder, which uh, with the plug-in reminder, it uh, just tells you that if I'm supposed to be ready by 8 a.m. and I'm not plugged in and you're supposed to be charging by that point, we send a message to you saying, please go plug your car. Now, unlike the Android, this doesn't have background tasks, so do you use Apple's push notification to send the alert? Uh, we give you little pop-ups? Yeah, we're going to do little pop-ups. I can't remember which one we're using. No, 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 no. There are some differences, too, because yeah. the Android actually doesn't pop up on your screen, yeah. or this one does. Yeah. So there will be some different, slightly different user experiences just because, because of the Because platform. of the different, yeah, the different right. platforms. Yeah. You can see the stats. Again, we didn't do any transactions here, but you can see if we did, they would show up as a successful, failed, or pending. And then the last thing here is we've got the ability to uh, uh, nickname your car. So okay. this is Sparky again, uh, but you can name it whatever you want. And then I will uh, just quickly flip through a few screens here to show you the charge now override functionality. iPod Touch as well? Uh, you can download this demo app to the iPod Touch. Okay. And you should be able to do that too. Okay. But again, you need the uh, the connectivity to our back office, yeah. so we have to work through. Uh, so you're stuck on Wi-Fi for now if you use the iPod Touch. Yeah, we just have to work through if we're going to allow oh, sorry, the demo app. You can. Yeah. But for the uh, for the production okay. stuff, we work through. Are we going to allow that to the okay. Wi-Fi to our back office, or are we going to rely strictly on cellular? Okay. But, uh, still working on that.